attack you if you're with an elf. Uh, uh, is he really an elf, I wonder? Or just some shady creature? Idiot response. This heading. Hey, is this okay though, Jill? Is what? You know, even if you are with me, ain't it bad news for a girl to be out this late? Besides, they're not elves. They're dangerous. More like monsters. Guts being how he is, you can't depend on him. And it's not like that queen's gonna become human again if you go to her. Hmm. Ah, uh, you might regret this. Whether I'd followed after him this way, or gone back to the village instead. Either way, probably. I'm sure I would regret it. Eh? But... But? Right now? I've already come this far. Jill, look! Ah! 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 <laughs> ah! 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 <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! With you? Oh. Uh. Sprinkle his dust on me. I hurt myself on the rocks and can't move. Not that I want it, but oh well. Um, uh, um, I'm sorry. Um. Whatever. Just hurry. Why'd you follow me? Huh? Peacock. Huh? Hey. Peacock. So what is Peacock? Oh, Peacock the Outcast. All the kids around here know about that. It's a fairy tale. Long ago, in a village, there was a boy named Peacock with pointed ears and red eyes. His parents loved him very much, but he was always bullied by the village children because of his eyes and ears. They called him Red-Eyed Peacock and Pointy-Eared Peacock. Peacock thought. This isn't my home. These people aren't my real parents. Because neither Peacock's father nor mother, nor even one person in the whole village had red eyes or pointed ears the way he did. One night, Peacock snuck out of his house without his parents knowing. He went to find his own real parents and his own real world in which to live. He made his way alone into the forest where the elves were said to live, where the grown-ups said to never go. And Peacock found them. They had red eyes and pointed ears. Certainly they were the same as him. But this is what they said to the overjoyed Peacock. You're one of us. No, not true. You haven't wings to ride upon the wind like we do. Seeing Peacock's confusion, one of them informed him of something. Long ago, a human man and woman brought a baby here who was close to death from illness. We have broken the law of our village and entered this forest to save this child. This child is our life. Please somehow save him. 
the man and woman pleaded desperately. They granted the request, using magic on the baby. The baby's life was saved, but in exchange, his appearance was altered to half resemble the elves. Even so, the man and woman cried tears of joy. It only mattered that their child lived. When Peacock heard this, he ran off in great haste. With tears in his eyes, he went swiftly back the way he'd come. But when Peacock returned to his house, it was all too late. On top of a small hill between the village, where he no longer knew a single person, and the elf forest, where no human was allowed to live. For some strange reason, even though he'd only been in the forest for a few moments, in the village a hundred years had passed. Peekoff the outcast cried and cried, his red eyes swollen even redder. <sighs> Not much of a happy ending. Rosine loved that story. In fact, she once told me, I'm just like Peekoff. Rosine was a girl four years older than me, who lived across the street. <laughs> to me, an only child, she was like a real big sister. Rosine was a little strange. She liked playing in the woods and streams like a boy would, and she'd do things like catch bugs and small animals to proudly show to me. She had lots of junk, the kind boys would consider treasure. The oddest of all was an egg-shaped stone, that looked like a human face. She said she found it on a riverbank and always took good care of it. Huh? <sighs> We'd play in the woods and stream so long that suddenly the sun would be starting to set. That kind of thing happened often. But when I think about it now, it was because Rosine avoided going home. I didn't understand because I was so young. Rosine's parents fought a lot. She was always the reason. She'd often have bruises on her cheeks and arms. At those times, she'd always tell me, Jill, the story of Peekoff isn't really right. In the real Peekoff story, it turns out he really is an elf. Even now, he lives happily with his real father and mother in the land of the elves. And to tell the truth, I'm just like Peekoff. I really belong in their land too. She turned to me as I looked serious and impressed and grin in a funny way. Like she was forcing herself to be cheerful. I heard about this later on. Before I was born, my village got wrapped up in a big conflict. At that time, almost all the villagers had taken refuge in the forest and were safe. But it seems not all the women escaped in time. Among them was Rosine's mother. Rosine had to grow up listening to her father's remarks. Like, is that girl really my daughter? Then one night, when it was raining heavily... Who's there? Rosine! Shh, Jill. This is goodbye. I'm leaving. Goodbye? Where are you going? Where else would I go? The Misty Valley. I'm going to the land of the elves. Farewell, Jill. I leave all my treasures to you. Rosine! Farewell. The grown-ups searched the forests and mountains for days looking for Rosine. But in the end, they weren't able to find her. Then, oddly enough, a few days later, her parents also vanished from the village. Almost like they followed after her. There was a wooden box with all the treasures Rosine said were mine now. But looking through it, that strange stone was the only thing I couldn't find. Then, some time afterwards, those elves started attacking villages. <sighs> I didn't really understand, being so young. But now I feel like I do a bit. How Rosine felt then. Hey, hey! That strange stone Rosine had? Again, you pest. Was it like this? Look! 
Like this? Oh, it's the same as hers. What is it? A freeloader at my place and my body pillow, Betchy. Betchy the Ballot. This is a magic stone. Bring back my Betchy! A magic stone that summons angels who grant power to weak little humans. Angels? They might just be demons disguised. But something like that. Even I don't get how you use this to summon them. But your friend ended up doing it. And she obtained that pseudo-elf form in exchange for something. Something? Funny that you mentioned fairy tales. It's just like Peacalf's eyes and ears. You gotta have some collateral for stuff like that. They require a sacrifice. They tell you to present what's most important to you in return for power. Huh? Gods? A few days later, her parents vanished, you said. <gasps> Rosine offered them up to have her own wish granted. Her own parents' lives. As sacrifices. <gasps> Let's put an end to this. This ain't some kid's fairy tale like Picaf. It's a gruesome, grown-up fairy tale. And if you stick your neck out any further, you'll end up dead. <laughs> Next time, <laughs> I'm not stopping my sword. This is no place for some kid who snuck off from a loser father and a powerless mother to go wandering around in. You're a nuisance. Hold on. Don't you think you went a bit too far? <laughs> Kids have their own fairy tales. You want to escape? Stick to Peacalf. Ah, uh, you get back here now! Why is it gotta be this way? You keep going on about kids, but well, excuse her for being one. This is child abuse. I'll sue. Regulations are strict these days. If you keep doing what you please, we'll get banned. Hey, what you doing there? Uh, whoa, whoa. You let me out, you little... You're as fairy tale as they come. And you never learn. Jill. 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 Don't let what that rotten creep says get you down. Kids can't be blamed for being what they are. There's nothing wrong with you or Rosine, Jill. It's just that kids always suffer. And it's society that's to blame for that. Yeah, but it's embarrassing and frustrating. Oh. By the way, Jill, I kind of got stuck trying to get out. Huh? Uh, uh, uh. Ah! Roz. Huh? Huh? Rosine? <laughs> it feels like ages, Jill. Rosine, is it you? Huh? Uh, uh, hmm. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> So that's Rosine. Look how big you are now, Jill. Almost as tall as me already. Is it really you, Rosine? Mm-hmm. But the way you look... Gah-wee! <laughs> look, look! Well, it's like I used to tell you. This is the real me. The real? Yep. The Queen of the Elves. Huh? Rosine offered them up to have her own wish granted. Her own parents' lives as sacrifices. Oh, Jill, this is like old times. There are lots we should catch up on. I hereby extend you an invitation oh, to our land of the elves, the Misty Valley. The Misty Valley? But I... She's allowed. Uh, 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 wait a minute. I... It's fine, fine. Don't you worry about a thing. It's a good place. You can play and have fun all the time. Even after the sun goes down. <laughs> it's okay. I won't drop you. Oh no! Jill! Please, 
about to kill Jill too. Did you mean to kill Jill too? So what if I did? Uh, <laughs> rotten! I already figured you were a rotten creep, but I never thought you'd stoop this low. Even a zombie fails at being as rotten as you. Inhuman scumbag. Dirty, rotten bastard. From now on, when I see you, I'm calling you the bastard swordsman. So anyway, that being said, you disgust me. I hope you get killed, jerk. Goodbye, so long, bastard swordsman. Ah, uh, bastard swordsman. <laughs> Did I hold back somehow? Never. You don't need to be scared, Jill. I won't let go, no matter what. Look. It's a view no human could ever see. The world, as seen only by birds and us winged elves. Oh, incredible. The forest. The river. So far away. The sky. It's so vast. Ah, beautiful. I didn't know the world was this beautiful. My village. So small. I can't see it anymore. In that tiny place, I become frightened and small. You can fly all you want, to your heart's content, Jill. That is, if you become one of us. You can fly all you want, to your heart's content, Jill. That is, if you become one of us. Me? An elf? But... but I... I couldn't. Why not? Why not? Why not? Who is he? Eh? Huh? A black swordsman. Jill? Do you have a thing for him? It... it's not that. Right. I don't know anything about him. It looks like he was heading for the Misty Valley. I wonder if he'll make it there. The valley is guarded by... Some dependable grown-ups. Huh? Grown-ups? Yup. They would never hurt children. And they protect us with their lives from all who would hurt us. They're real grown-ups. Protectors of children. The forest guardians, you'd say. The mist is everywhere now. This feeling. I must be just about at the Misty Valley. Forgot about us. <laughs> you can't pass. Anyone who'd hurt the children, we won't let any of them pass this point. From bandits to babysitters, huh? And from human to something else by the look of it. Yeah! <laughs> 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 ha! Ah! <laughs> 
I'm not going anywhere. No joke. There's no way I'd ever pass through and leave even one of you alive. Every last one of you is dead. Don't bother moving aside. I'll trample every one of you. Coming through! <laughs> 